Hello again. Uh, so I think we evolved out of the introduction to logarithmic stage and now we can talk about solving logarithms. And I got three different problems. Actually, this one would be evaluating because it's an expression. But yeah, it's the same thing. Well, it's not, but yeah, you can treat it like it is. And I got three different problems here. And we're going to start from left to right and see how to do this. <coughs> now, in this uh, particular method, you can use two different methods. Uh, it's your choice. Um, Either one is the same as the other. You can write this in exponential form. Uh, so if you do that, set it equal to, well, that equal y is not actually there. Equals y. And there's a little bit of a stipulation here. You're not actually solving for a variable y, you're just evaluating an expression. So it's not an equation. So yeah, for those of you who are watching this, you're saying, you, you, well, it's just to help people out to understand what's going on. So, you know, you don't have to do it this way. So this is 2 to the power of y equals 64. Basically, what that means is uh, 2 to what number equals 64? Well, let's see. Uh, 2 times 1, uh, sorry, 2 to the first is 2, 2 to the second is 4, 2 to the third is 8, 2 to the fourth is 16, 2 to the fifth is uh, 32, 2 to the sixth is 64. Let's just make sure 4, 8, 16, 32, so yes. So the answer to this one is 6. It's not actually y equals 6 because there was no y to solve for in the first place, but it just helps students to figure that out. Uh, there's another way to do this, and you can use it with the inverse properties of logs. Uh, I think that the exponential way is actually easier, but uh, staying consistent with what we're supposed to do. Log base 2, and what you do is you simplify the number 64. Uh, what can you write it as? And you can write it as 2 to the 6th, and using the inverse property of logs, like, oh, I got log base 2, and I got that same uh, number as a base uh, to some uh, stranded exponent. Bam! They're the same. Answer 6. So two different ways to do the same problem. Uh, what you would do to split 64 is use uh, factor trees. That's 8 and 8, 4 and 2, 2 and 2. So, and then the other 8 is 4 and 2, 2 and 2. So it's 2 to the power of 6. There's 6 twos. Two different ways to do it. Your choice. And of course my students ask me, uh, well, what's the best way to do it? And I say the simple answer. Whichever way is easier for you to do, is the way you should do it. Well, how do you how do you put that on tests? Or how do you put that on books? I put it. I give you a problem and you solve it. You know, you have the tools. You can choose any way to solve it, but you gotta know all the ways in order to solve it. You can't just rely on one way all the time. It's not how life works. Okay. Uh, next one. Log of four to the n equals five halves. In this case, I would just write it in exponential for, uh, form. Uh, that's the easiest way. You want an answer? That's the easiest way for this one. So it's 4 to the power of 5 halves equals n. Now I'll show you a real cool trick here. 4 is the same thing as 2 squared to the power of 5 halves equals n. 2 squared is the same thing as 2 to the 2 over 1. That's 2 to the fifth equals n. 2 to the fifth is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 32. So n in this case equals 32. And I can put a variable because the variable is there to actually solve. So in this case, technically, you can't put y equals 6. But who cares? As long as you can figure out what you're doing, it makes sense. In this case, I got log base 5 of uh, the quantity p squared minus 2 equals log base 5 of p. And I'm supposed to figure out what the p value is in order to make this true. And you can sit there and you can try plugging in numbers that will make this one and this one true. And that's a way of doing it. Uh, there's another way of doing it too. One way I could suggest is uh, taking uh, everything and putting a five in front of this log of five, and putting a five in front, not as a not as like a coefficient or a constant or a multiplier, but as a as a base, you know, five to that. And what happens is, since they're inverse operations, they would cancel. But an easier way to think about it is this: if you've got a log of a base on one side, it's just one log. You know, there's two. No, it's just one log equaling the log of that same base on the other side, it's just one log, one log on each side, then all you really have to do is cancel out the logs. Now that's only if they're the same base and there's one on each side. You can't do that if there's, if there's two log base 5's here and there's one log base 5. No, that doesn't work. Uh, if there's one log base 5 and one log base 5 on each side, and those are the only logs, then you can do that. So uh, from there, we'll go ahead and solve this. p squared minus 2 equals p. And what I want to do is solve this, and I can solve it by factoring. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to subtract p on both sides. 
that marker's gone. P squared minus P minus 2 equals 0, factor. P times P is P squared. A positive and negative make a negative. Uh, what times what is 2 but it adds up to be negative 1, and it's negative 2, positive 1. Use a zero product property. Now, this step right here is just all factoring. From here on, so if that's 4 to you, factor. I got some videos on factoring too if you want to catch up on that. So P equals negative 1, P equals 2. Now, what you have to do is you have to check the answers. And basically, your x value has got to be greater than 0. Uh, this value right here has to be greater than 0. It can't be negative. Well, let's see what happens. If I put in 2, it's 2 squared minus 2. Oh, I'm sorry, 2 squared. Whew, saying the wrong thing. 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. Checks out. My x is uh, greater than 0. If I go ahead and do that here, it's 2. Whew, story checks out. No problem so far. If I plug in negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1 minus 2 is negative 1, negative 1. Now they're equivalent, but your value can't be negative here. Your x value, this is technically your x value, your input value, it can't be negative. So this solution is extraneous, arbitrary, trivial, capricious, whatever you want to say, and this is the solution that works. Uh, this is not a solution, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So there you go, p equals 2, and equals 32, and this one just uh, simplifies to 6 because technically there's no variable. So that's our uh, solving logarithms. We're going to start using properties and see how to do that. Uh, students aren't really big fans of it, but eh, just going to have to buy into it and see how it goes. Other than that, have a good day for now.